Sushi Go is a masterpiece. Yes, to me it is a modern masterpiece of economy, simplicity, minimalism, and yet such a good game. A game that I can play as a filler with hardcore gamers and we have a good time. I can bring it uh, to camping and play with adult non-gamers. I can play with my daughters, they're six and eight now, but I've been playing with them for a long time. You can play with anybody and it is such a simple fun game. Then we have Sushi Go Party that had more ways of playing the game and I love that too. So since I love the sushi family ga of games so much, you can imagine how excited I was when I saw Sushi Roll in my friendly local game store. What a pleasant surprise, I had no idea the game existed. That's why you go to local friendly game stores. And I thought, whoa, wait a second, Sushi Go with dice? Uh, yes, that's exactly what it is. And just by telling you the name, pretty much Sushi Roll, the dice game, I, if you know Sushi Go, now you know how to play this game. Take a die from a pool, pass the remaining dice, the other player rolls them, and you roll the ones that you receive, take a die, and then you score them at the end of the round. It is that simple, it is that similar to Sushi Go, so now maybe you have a suspicion, well, why do I need it then? I'll show you how the game works, so you also see the components, you learn a couple of other details about gameplay, and then we'll compare Sushi Go and Sushi Roll, and we'll see if Sushi Roll in general is as good as it's supposed to be. Yes, it is. Oh gosh, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Yes, it's it's great. It's a great game, but I'm supposed to show it to you first. If I tell you the sushi roll is like sushi go but with dice, I guess I taught you about 80% of the game. Uh, pretty much you can jump to the conclusions of this video, but just because it is my habit to tell you a little bit about the game, so I'm gonna show how the game works. Each player has a play race such as this one. This section here simply shows you the probability of what you're gonna find on the dice. So basically it's the breakdown on the various sides of the dice. What really matters is this area here where you will store your dice. And here you have a section that tells you uh, the tokens that you start the game with and also the value of tokens at the end of the game. You will, in fact, have swap tokens during the game and re-roll tokens that you will spend during your turn. Then there are these little trays representing sections of the conveyor belt, which is where players are grabbing the most delicious, the most delicious um, selection of sushi. And then, all important, we have a bag of dice, more dice than will actually be used, uh, which is important because this way you can't count dice. You do not know exactly uh, which dice exactly are going to be used each round. You assign one of these trays to each player and then each player will randomly draw a number of dice from the bag. The number depends on the number of players. Each player rolls those dice, so draws those dice and then rolls those dice. And I'm totally not picking and choosing in the bag. I'm just, uh, just delaying because I like to keep it exciting and interesting. So, um, each player will draw and roll their dice and put them on their tray. Then we start with the starting player. The starting player, yeah, differently from Sushi Go, not everybody acts at the same time. The starting player will take their turn, which will start, uh, and at the beginning of the turn you can use your tokens. By spending a menu, you can reroll any and all or some of your dice and you can do that as many times as you want as long as you're spending rerolls. If you spend the swap token you will simply get to swap one of your dice so without changing the orientation with a, die, with a die on someone else's tray. Oh, for example, I really like uh, that symbol there, whatever, and I want to give you this one instead and I spend my swap and we do that. When you swap dice, you do not change the orientation of the dice. So the active player may spend tokens, but it's not mandatory, but then what is necessary is the active player will choose one of the dice, place it on their, on their personal tray. Everybody will do the same, say this player here has decided to save 
Desta instead. If you spend a die, if you get a die with the symbol, then we'll give you one token you put it in your area. Uh, this will give you two menus, and this one will give you two chopsticks, and this is just a wasabi, which works exactly like in good old, in good old sushi go. In any case, after each player selects a die, each player will pass their trays to the next player, and then we go back to the idea that players alternate taking their turn so they can spend the tokens, select a die and things keep going around and going around and going around until all dice have been assigned. That is the end of a round. Uh, that at that point we score. We keep victory point. We take victory point tokens to keep track of how many points we scored at the end of each round. We play three times and at the end of the third round, the player with the most victory points wins the game. As for scoring, if you played Sushi Go, you probably know. Important thing, if you have a Wasabi, when you then get a Nigiri, you place the Nigiri on top of the Wasabi. Now, uh, Nigiri, they're simply worth the number of points that, that, they, that it's indicated by the symbol. This one is worth one, two victory points, three victory points. If a Nigiri is setting a top of a Wasabi, then you triple the value of that Nigiri. At the end of each round, you check to see who has the most Maki, the player with the total with the highest Maki scores six victory points, second player three victory points. These delicious things here, these dumplings, uh, score based on how many you have. A single dumpling is two points, two or four, three is eight. These tempura here, one is five, one is one, two is five, three is ten. They really grow on you, and even more so for this thing, I don't remember the name. Single one is worth nothing, it's an acquired taste, the first one, I don't know. But two of them, mm, six and then thirteen. This die here will give you wasabi, which is worthless by itself unless you put an IG on top, and then tokens. These, these dice, uh, you may remember the symbol, of course, from Sushi Go. At the end of the round, you don't score them yet. You simply take it, tokens equal to the number of the desserts that you have. And so at the end of each round, you will simply trade those symbols with tokens with the same number of symbols. At the end of the game, the player with the most desserts will score six points, and the player with the fewest will score six points. Like in Sushi Go, these are scored only at the end of the last round, not at the end of each round. This is how you play Sushi Roll. Go, go around the board, draw dice, roll dice, form combinations of dice, Collect tokens, spend tokens, and at the end of the third round, the player with the highest score is the winner of the game. So it's a great game. Uh, in a sense, uh, when you have something as good as Sushi Go, I'm almost thinking, all you need to do is don't mess it up. Just really give us the same thing in a different format. And you're thinking, well, but why do I need the same thing in a different format? It's a nice variant. It's a nice variant. But um, if that is not enough for you to justify adding a sushi roll to your collection after you already have Sushi Go, it does play slightly differently. And I have to say, the uncertainty that comes from the fact that your rolling dice is important. To me, it is. It is. Uh, it really enhances gameplay because there are times in Sushi Go in which, well, knowing exactly what's in play, especially I would say two players. Uh, it's very important, but then I'm counting and I'm basing my strategy on, well, I know that my opponent knows what I have, I'll take this Maki and I hope I can form a set, I hope I can get enough of this, enough of that, I take this card because I don't want the opponent to have it, I like this card, but what happens if the opponent takes that card? It can really uh, get very, uh, I wouldn't say mathy, but you can definitely uh, form a strategy around the fact that you almost have Perfect information. With two players, you pretty much have perfect information. With a higher number of players, uh, well, it's still more about the feeling. I feel there are these many cards in play of this type, etc., etc. So actually, when it comes to a higher number of players, Sushi Roll and Sushi Go are not very different because you have the level of uncertainty. 
In Sushi Go, from the fact that you haven't seen every card or you don't remember every card, in Sushi Roll, by the fact that, that is given by the fact that you don't know what you're gonna roll. You get a sense of what you may get, and of course, that also means that you have a sense of what you're giving to the opponent. At lower numbers of players, that is when the game really is different because that ability of calculating almost everything, I think that he thinks that I think and I know what's there, da, 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 you don't have it in Sushi Roll. But yet, you're not thrown completely into a dark pit of randomness because you can still decide what the opponent is going to get in terms of the range of possibilities. And that is important because there's an element here of push your luck. If I decide to keep to take a red die, then it may give me one, two, or three maki, then, well, I don't know exactly if I'm gonna get enough to beat you. So I decide if I wanna go for that strategy that in fact might allow me to score more points or wanna take another die that I know will give me something. And the same is for some other dice that will give you combinations if you have a lot of those. And so there is a push your luck element which is more prominent than in the basic Sushi Go. At the same time, I like push your luck games in which you don't have to push your luck. If it's a game where you're forced to push your luck because there's nothing else you can do, in a sense that detracts a little bit from the experience. But in Sushi Roll, you can choose for safer sets or sets that may pay off more if in that indeed you get to roll what you hope you will roll. So to me, those are really nice elements that work together very well. The game is not any more complex than Sushi Go. It still moves very fast. It's not entirely simultaneous as you have in Sushi Go. But that also may have some advantages because now as players take their turn, I'm actually paying attention to what you're doing, getting a better sense of what you have, getting a sense of what you're trying to do. So what you have here is yes, more randomness than in Sushi Go, but then also you have those tokens that of course have a big role and that counterbalance that. So you have randomness and strategies. Yes, limited knowledge, but also ways of trying to figure out what's going on. And so in general you have, I wouldn't say more, I don't know, opposite elements of the design that balance each other as opposed to everything feeling just in a perfect, nice, minimalistic balance as you have in Sushi Go. One thing, the production, this game could fit in a much smaller box probably that would make for a better travel game. Ultimately those play arrays that you have, I don't think they really need them once you know the probabilities, uh, all you need is really the bag of dice and the tokens, even the conveyor belts, strictly speaking, you don't need them. This is my pool of dice, I take one and here's my dice, I give them to you. Even if I mess them up a little bit, it's okay because you're going to roll them anyways. So, um, well, you can turn this into a travel game, just get the dice and the tokens when you go on vacation. But, you know, that's so you can you can still travel light you don't have to bring the box and the big boards with you but in general uh, broadly speaking sushi roll is a great game absolutely a great game i like it at least as much as i like sushi go and i like it a lot as time goes by i don't know i may like this one even more in any case i'm definitely happy that i have the option of playing the game in different ways because it's a great game and you know more more variety more flexibility in the system sushi roll if you love the original game you're gonna love this one if you haven't played the original game well try to, to you need to remedy that and maybe you decide to start from sushi roll that'd be fine too sushi roll is a great game anyway